at the real deal now. Gonna kick this sorry ass out on the street. <laughs> you know what you got? You used to think you owned the street. We're back to back and your ass is dead meat. How is it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week number 44 of the Lowdown Show, Brand Wars on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are your Canadian-based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw, Tuesday Night Smackdown from the past week, and also during the show we have our new segment that's going to make his debut today called The List of Ten. And we'll get to that later on in the show. We also have WWE Headlines where we talk about any important news in the WWE every week. The Lowdown Show is broadcasted live right here on Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP or on the Spreaker app available on Android and Apple devices. So go download it and check it out, ladies and gentlemen. It is a fantastic podcast app. And after it is done, for your listening enjoyment, it is posted on Spreaker and YouTube in full. And I'm currently, I've figured out something about Spreaker that uh, we'll get to in a bit. So go check us out wherever it's convenient and uh, easier for you to listen to us. If you'd like to join in the conversation, have your thoughts and questions read and discussed on the podcast, tweet us at no holds barred WP or by dropping a comment on YouTube. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. And every week, like this one, I am continued to be joined by my co-host, the boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Cappy, the blissful boss. Blissful boss, not about that. Back. Back in two weeks, two weeks, I think. Yeah. Snowy day out here, and I think it's for most people on the eastern and uh, east coast. Yeah, east coast got a lot of snow. I know people in New York got freaking hammered here, and it's all right. Light snowflakes. Nothing big, man. We never get big weather here. There's always like the weather people here where we live in Niagara Falls. Is blunt. We can say we're Niagara Falls now because we come out and pretty much say where we live. Yes, we live in Niagara Falls, the supposed honeymoon capital of the world. It's complete bullshit. Um, <laughs> But the weather people around here are fucking hilarious. Okay? Yeah, quick, we're going to get these huge storms. They, they're, they're like predicting, oh, guys, get ready. It's a tornado warning. You know, nail your door shut. Be careful for 50-kilometer winds. And then when the storm comes here, we get like five drops of rain and no wind. It's like there's a bubble around Niagara Falls. Like this whole Niagara region, there's like a bubble. <laughs> and then whenever there's like... It, I never, I never, you know, take what... The, I always take what they say with a grain of salt. I, I know, okay, if they, if they say it's going to rain heavy, I'm like, okay, at least it's going to rain. So I know what to prepare for. I just know I'm not going to get, you know, walk outside and, you know, Mary Poppins my way out of here. And that's not going to happen. <laughs> and the snowstorms we get, we never usually get snow days anymore. No. Uh, but yeah, so we have a new segment we're doing today yeah. with you coming back. And it's called The List of Ten. Basically, I'm going to run it down, guys. It's going to be after we do the review. Uh, me and him have five moments from the week each. And we're either going to give it a rating of 10, which is a, you know, perfect 10 tie Dillinger, or it will make the list. So <laughs> basically our good or bad moments of the week, we have five each. Um, completely different. We didn't, uh, didn't do, we made sure we didn't have the same ones. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Some weeks they may overlap depending yeah, we'll on. See. Uh, yeah. If they're, how much content produces. We know nothing will be on Raw, more will be on SmackDown. Um, what else is new? Yeah. And we also are going to start doing Twitter fan of the month. Yeah. So, guys, I know you guys have all been – there's a lot of you out there that want to be fan of the year. So we got something new for you. So we're still going to have Twitter fan of the year. In our Michael slams. Chow, you're still fan of the year. Okay? Yeah, Michael Chow, don't worry. You're still fan of the year. So relax. Got your Rico theme still here on the phone. <laughs> our uh, not, No Holds by Wrestling podcast, Samsung Galaxy Note 3. Um, yes, yeah, so, ladies and gentlemen, that's what we record our podcast on if you wanted to know. Really different. Uh, anyways, Twitter fan of the month. We're going to pick one fan at the end of each month on Twitter. And you'll also have your entrance theme for that following month. We will showcase you on the Lowdown Show for that month. Yeah. And we'll, well, I don't know. We'll, maybe we'll showcase you on the Twitter page as well. Who knows? We'll see. Um, but yeah, we're going to have Twitter fans of the month. So that's something new for the podcast as well. But you still got to try to become Twitter fan of the year. Yeah. So don't give up. Don't just try going for Twitter fan of the month. Don't, be, don't cheap out. Okay. Come on. Send us your shit. And if you are a Twitter fan of the year, you can't win the we the monthly awards so yeah. michael chow unfortunately you, you can't win yeah, you are exempt award. from twitter fans of the month i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> you're already twitter fan of the year with sorry your own sorry team. to disappoint you well oh, it's I know, really sure, a compliment i'm sure you're so disappointed because no you still get your entrance theme all year round <laughs> you don't no. get two okay it doesn't it doesn't happen <laughs> yeah, we have to spread the love michael chow i mean you're a rock star but you're not gonna get a heel and a face entrance theme. <laughs> that's not how it works here 
But uh, yeah, so look for that. Look for that. So a lot of new things for the podcast. Um, I discovered something with Spreaker, and I'm not sure if it's going to work or not. We'll see after this episode when, when it's posted. Um, I discovered that I can post directly to iTunes, Stitcher, and SoundCloud through this app. I don't know if I'm going to have to pay for those accounts, but I found the RSS feed through Spreaker. I didn't know I could do that. And it automatically, even if I want to, I can hook it up. I can hook up YouTube to it, and it'll automatically just send everything after we're done. Hmm. So I've turned on iTunes. I've turned on, uh, I think I turned on iTunes, Stitcher, and SoundCloud. And I'm going to see what happens after. Because we did have a SoundCloud account, and I revived it. I didn't, I didn't buy any plan or anything. But uh, if it all works out, I'll get the links for all those uh, all those links. I know you guys all listen to us on YouTube anyways. But, you know, just for a variety. I know we've had people complain that they've been listening to us on iTunes. And then uh, we went off iTunes. So if we get iTunes back, I'll put the links in the description. I'll update everything. So just stay tuned for that. So that's all out of the way. It's uh, about six minutes of the podcast so far. But uh, uh, we got to get that stuff out of the way. I do want to talk about something before we get going here. And it's solely... I, it still has to do with WrestleMania. I am so fucking glad that we're not going this year. With the rumored card and what it actually looks like, I would have been pissed off the entire weekend. I would have been so upset, man. We would have spent over two grand that weekend. American. With access and all that shit. That's like three grand Canadian. For the rumored card. That looks like it's going to be the worst WrestleMania of all time. It's going to outbeat last year's horrendous WrestleMania. <laughs> Why do you go from worse to even worse? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Like, it's supposed to be the best show of the year. The one rumor I heard of John Cena and Nikki Bella teaming up to face Miz and Maurice. Are you fucking kidding me? Seriously, we're gonna that, get that? That's a match that should be on a, a lower end pay per view. Like, and now like a, you, you don't even know my version. thoughts now towards the Universal Title going to Goldberg and burying Owens. That's just fucking. We'll get to that later. <laughs> but WrestleMania just looks absolute trash. So if the if the rumored card is true that Meltzer released, I'm gonna be fucking upset. I'll only be happy if the other rumor I heard is true and that's Ty Dillinger will be in the under the giant Memorial battle Royal. I hope he wins it. Can he come out the 10th guy walk out? <laughs> Even if they all come out the same time and you counting, can he be the 10th guy walking to the <laughs> ring just for shits? Maybe he could get an entrance. Cause yeah. some of them get like two of them yeah. get entrances. That'd be great. Maybe he's like the last guy to enter the Royal rumble, man, or the, the battle Royal people will go nuts for that. Especially exactly. the WrestleMania crowd. But yes, I'm glad we are not spending our hard earned money on that hot garbage so to update a lot of you guys out there um we uh i i contacted our local cinema cinema in hopes of renting a theater out to show us because we got a bunch of goon friends here that want to go we had we, i think we could have like 20 people and we wanted to rent it out to watch wrestlemania and i finally after a week and a half of no answer i finally got an email the other day and they said unfortunately due to rights they're not allowed to let me rent it out because I would need to get the rights from WWE to show it. Even well, though I told them I get the network through my cable subscriber and my cable network, like we're using I am a, not allowed to show we're not it. We're using an illegal stream over here. And so I don't know what the deal is with that. It's, if it's like a Canadian law, I'm not allowed to show WrestleMania through a paid provider than WrestleMania. or that I'm not allowed to show WrestleMania through a paid provider even though I'm paying for it yeah basically that uh i don't know i need the right i need to call WWE and say yo by the way i'm using my paid subscription to the network to show wrestlemania in a theater i'm not i'm not gaining revenue i'm not charging people i'm paying to be there but i need your permission what the fuck is that <laughs> that's corporate that's what that is that's like asking your mom if you're allowed to eat breakfast like doesn't make any sense I don't understand. Anyways. Anyways, so he got an email back after that saying that the Cineplex is actually going to be showing WrestleMania this year. First time in a long time at the Cineplex in our home. Because of our persistent request. Yeah. So they're going to be showing it, and that's where we're going to be watching WrestleMania this year, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be watching it in a movie theater, which is going to be fucking exciting because that just creates a whole different atmosphere. And I hope more people come. I'm going to put a, a mass Facebook uh, 
group invite for that just so we can get a lot of people it's better it's not it would suck if you go into the movie theater there's only like what 10 of you guys there like 10 of your friends I, I want it to be like at least half packed so that we can get like a crowd atmosphere going you know Get some ten chance going, some yes chance, some there'll probably be some for, Roman Reigns. Boo the fans shit out there, of the though. building for Roman Reigns. That'd you know, be there'll be awesome. there know there'll be some casuals in there though. Yeah, oh fuck yeah, we could throw some popcorn at them. That's what we can do. Exactly. So yeah. that's our week. Yeah, that's a uh, that's the rant slash discussion. It's a ten minutes already in the podcast. Ten. Jesus. <laughs> oh, ten. Ironically, or coincidentally, but. Yeah, that's our rant. So we'll get into the, the tweets out there then. We'll start the show off already with the tweets. And we'll start with the Raw tweet. Ugh, fucking Raw, man. Raw's just so bad. I didn't want to. I just get that before I get that out of the way. Raw, what the fuck, man? Did they, how come they haven't figured out a formula to produce a good Raw yet? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Let's see what your responses are out there, guys. So we'll start off with Glorious Greg. He puts. Samoa Joe winning against Roman Reigns. Raw gets a 3 out of 10. The rest of the show put me to sleep. Hashtag dumpster fire. Hashtag Monday night, Monday night nap time. <laughs> well, I see a lot of people using that hashtag Monday night nap time. Um, hashtag no man gains. <laughs> exactly. No man Perfect. gains from facing Roman Reigns. Also... <laughs> That fucking Braun Strowman scream. I can't believe I agreed to this to play the Braun Strowman scream every fucking time that I one of you guys writes it in. I can't believe I agreed to that. Anyways, moving on. Colin at Gamma NU1. He puts 10 out of 10 for uh, Colin. I think you need to rewrite, reread your rating here. 10 out of 10? I know I don't like were to criticize our, our Twitter comments here, but were you watching the same Raw? But he puts 10 out of 10 for Joe again. But it doesn't save the rest of the show this week. You, you, what? I think he means 10 out of 10 for the Joe For just Joe? I mean, man, that's a good rating, but wow. Braun killing Reigns was a nice touch, though. (laughs) Well, fuck, I agree with that. Anyone killing Roman Reigns is a nice touch. Uh, Anyway, moving on. Tyler Jones at Tyler Jones 22. But my God, hashtag... Oh, God, he loves that. About to be so over after this next month. Joe was sick. Everything else was pretty shit. 6.58 out of 10. That's what these point <laughs> What's whatever what ratings is the scale gave? that you guys rating her on? It's hilarious. Uh, next set of tweets, Irrelevance. That forlorn puts, I missed Raw for an hour, but I don't give a fuck. Why? Because I got YouTube so I can go back and watch the great promos. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, no, the great problem was Joe put on, so I didn't finish the sentence. My boy is going to, is going to be the biggest baby face ever going into fast lane. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, probably. Uh, oh, and uh, uh, Emma, who gives a fuck? <laughs> mm. Speaking about Emma Lena, Small Joe looking strong, but of course the big dog can't lose clean. Nah, son. When the big dog got to hunt, he's gonna hunt. He's go- oh no, he's gonna beat or get beat up by my boy. <laughs> fuck Roman Reigns. Fuck and fuck the thought of Goldberg being champ. Three out of ten. <laughs> See, that's a good rating right there. I would even put a lower. We'll get into that later. Next set tweets Tony Mercer. The great Green Bay fan and it's Tony Mercer. No, I got, I'm not getting nothing on him anymore. <laughs> Raw wasn't all that bad this week. It was eh, but watchable and not dumpster fire necessarily. I'd give it 5.75 out of 10. You've got, your ratings out there are freaking hilarious, man. Five Where do point- you get these .75 from? <laughs> And I'm the only one who am I the only one who noticed Nia Jax channeled her inner Okada and delivered the Rainmaker to Bailey? You know what? Thank you, Tony Mercer, for pointing that out. I when I first seen it, that's exactly went through my fucking head was the Okada Omega match with the Rainmaker. I'm like, oh, did they did that on purpose? And I, I had to Is rewatch it and go see it again. But uh yeah, I think I, I didn't notice Tony Mercer. Thank you for pointing that out. Um Joshy J at Joshy J. Simply gave us a gift this week, and it was a burning dumpster fire for Raw. <laughs> We've posted that before. It's yeah. great. 
Thank you, Josh and Jay, for giving us that gift. That is great. Uh, next set of tweets, Casey Salvis. Oh, no. He always entertaining. Casey Salvis, you better get prepared to laugh here, son. Uh, garbage show. <laughs> Nobody wants to see Goldberg be champion. Part timer should not be champion. Samoa Joe is a monster heel, and Rain get Reigns gets still gets booed because he's garbage. <laughs> Always in the main event. Four out of ten. Hashtag dumpster fire. I love Casey's ratings, uh, man. They're great. They're corporate like mine. Yep. Uh, oh, Irrelevance gave us some more late tweets after that, and it was like one more thing. <laughs> God. Yeah, that's all. Fuck Oldberg. <laughs> Oldberg. <laughs> uh, and the last set of raw tweets comes from... You, you love so good to me. That's right. It comes from Matt Reed, Michael Chow, and his entrance team for winning the 2016 NHBWP Twitter Fan of the Year. And he puts 3 out of 10 with the dumpster fire emoji. So we're going to use the flame emoji as the dumpster fire emoji and the sleeping emoji. On to the next post. This show sucks. <laughs> Goldberg gets a title shot. Roman interrupts Joe. Triple H disappears again. There is no build or logic on this show. And he has a gif of uh, Shane McMahon just going. Oh, yeah. I love that gif. That's one of my favorites. <laughs> uh, pros. Hashtag beat up Roman Reigns. That's it. On to the next post. <laughs> Cons, WWE's creative booking for Raw, the Raw Roulette. <laughs> it's just Garfield with the roulette wheel. <laughs> oh, God, yes. That's so true. It's almost like they have a fucking roulette wheel. I'm like, ah, oh, shit. Enzo and Cass, what do we do? Spin the wheel. Uh, Put them back in the main event? Oh, yeah, why not? We uh, tried doing something with New Day. But and the, their, their one wheel is rigged because it's got Roman Reigns on every yeah, fucking thing. Yeah, it's like, okay, we've got to talk about the Universal title, guys. All right, let's bring out the Roman wheel. We got about uh, 20 different categories here. Each of them say fucking Roman Reigns. <laughs> Let's spin it here. <laughs> oh, Roman Reigns. Wait. The anticipation's building. Oh, it's going to be Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns. All right, we're going with Roman Reigns. All right, guys, let's go. Come on, done. Get that shit produced. Let's go. Roman Reigns. Uh, question by Michael Chow. Goldberg is rumored to hold the title into Mania. What else is new? What are your thoughts of part-timers holding the championship title? And he's got the the rock giving the keys to Miz with the truck and the gift. I think it's terrible. It's yeah, the to the right part timer sure. Because if it was Undertaker this year, I wouldn't have a problem with it. Obviously, I don't think anyone would. But Goldberg doesn't need the fucking title. That Lesnar Goldberg match has enough fucking build that you don't need to put the title in between them. Like and literally, just put a stipulation. You don't need a fucking title. Put a stipulation. And we all know that 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 match is Goldberg's last match. Yeah, or at least. We think. Well, rumored. Now there's rumors of his contract being extended to next year's WrestleMania because oh they're going back to New God. Orleans and they want to stack that one. Just like you wanted to stack this one, Vince. Oh, what a fucking stack card. Roman Reigns versus The Undertaker? Oh, that just blows every other match out of the water. I thought Goldberg only wanted to have one match at Survivor Series. God, <laughs> remember the rumors that? of like Goldberg and Undertaker? That would have been worse. <laughs> I don't think I would have liked that either. But we'll get into your SmackDown tweets out there. And we'll start off with Michael Chow. He puts SmackDown Live gets my rare first ever 10 out of 10. Wow. Best go-home show I've ever seen with only two weeks to build to the pay-per-view. Raw equals WCW and has the pit, the gif of a Lunder Blaze putting the title into the trash can. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't agree is more Is that the with Universal that. title or what? <laughs> or, the, or the Raw no, Women's that's, title? That's the push. That's everyone's push that should be pushed on Raw going into the trash can. And the trash can is labeled Roman Reigns. <laughs> Uh, Michael Shaw puts pros hashtag Corbin Revolution hashtag Heel Ziggler hashtag Ascension Push City Baby Women's Rev or hashtag Women's Verbal Revolution No James Ellis Hallelujah <laughs> Yeah, there was no James Ellis this week on television that, for that matter um, Cons No women's match but forgivable for their great promo they had compared to Raw's which was just cringe mania Agreed <laughs> Cannot agree, cannot disagree. You had the the Bailey disappointed uh, gif. Oof, she looked good there in that dress, my lord. Neat. Uh, question: Which is your favorite chamber match? Mine was the first one with Shawn Michaels winning mm -hmm. his first title since coming back. And uh, our boy uh, Jordan Spears today put out that mass question um, of uh, what's your favorite chamber match, and I put uh, 
mine goes back to it, it was after the chamber match is when John Cena was like freaking looked like he was about to be put into his grave finally and then Edge comes out and cashes money in the bank on him for New the Year's first Revolution. ever yep that was my favorite moment by far. But Shawn Michaels winning the title, that was just such a feel-good That's story. the only one that I can actually remember, so I'm going to say that one. Because like, the other ones, they feel, just... Yeah. I don't know. The Elimination re- Chamber matches from like, the PG era were like, bad. If you, you know go what? back and look who was in them, I'm like, what? <laughs> I, I do remember the one because they showed it last week. The one where Daniel Bryan retained the title and Santino Morello was yeah. the last guy. Yeah. He almost beat Daniel Bryan with the Cobra. <laughs> the PG era killed that match. They had like, Swagger win it the yeah. one year. It was oh. it was bad. But that's my favorite moment, I guess. Yeah. I don't really have a favorite chamber match itself. Oh, what about when Mark Henry's pod broke? Oh yeah, that one <laughs> no, it was not even a favorite. I didn't even like the match. It was a good no, moment. it was no, it was a terrible match because remember yeah. there was like five oh, people standing yeah. in the ring it and they didn't so know bad. what to do. Uh, anyways. Tyler Jones SmackDown tweet. SmackDown was actually pretty bad this week. Only redeeming thing was all the hotness in the contract signing. He put 3.47 out of 10. Okay, we're going to stop with these .7 whatever <laughs> ratings now. I would have to agree with Irrelevance Andrew Doom in putting the wrong uh, picture because SmackDown was actually really good I don't know really what show you week. were watching this week, yeah. Tyler Jones. Maybe you're watching your Preds lose because that's oh. probably worse. Uh, Casey Selvis puts really good show. The Fatal 4 match was awesome. Actually, I agree with that. That was actually the best part of SmackDown. Great to see Corbin get a pin. Every match was built up great. Can't say anybody or myself, uh, Casey. Just SmackDown. For, just, for a go-home show, you can't expect it to be, you know, over-the-top wrestling. And by the A-brand show. And, li- and like Michael Kyle said, they literally didn't even have two weeks. It was like one week to build this pay-per-view. Yeah. Yeah, which is exactly. pathetic. Well, SmackDown always gets the shaft when it comes to pay per views after major pay per views. But it looks like they're going to build one of their great. They did this with Backlash, and Backlash ended up being really good. So this is exactly what's going to happen with Elimination Chamber. They got two weeks to build for it, and it's actually going to be decent. It's going to be ten times better than fucking Fastlane or Raw Rumble for that matter. <laughs> uh, Irrelevance puts reading these negative comments about SmackDown has me drinking bleach. SmackDown was good. Better than last week, and I can't wait for Elimination Chamber. See, yeah, we can actually agree with you here, Relevance, for once. Look at this. We actually appreciate that. I mean, I love – don't even stop not tweeting, though. I love your tweets as always. Um, Corbin continued to look great, surprisingly pinned AJ, and I was surprised to s- that the Cena-Orton match was decent. See, uh, I pointed something out during that that a lot of people were bad-mouthing it. I was actually happy for that to happen because I'd rather see it happen now than, than WrestleMania. fucking WrestleMania. <laughs> so I was like, all for it. Fucking put them in a main event smack. I don't so even we, give so a shit. So we see it twice, two weeks in a row now. It actually been good. Did those guys put up a good match? It's Cena and Orton for Christ's sakes, man. But it's not WrestleMania 2017 yeah. worthy. Uh, the Wyatt family is the most interesting thing on the show, and I can't wait to see how it continues. They are one of the most interesting things. Mm-hmm. Uh, three women's matches without the word history being used once. Love it. <laughs> yes. Why? What does W have lately with this fascination or this fascination on uh, uh, making history in the first time ever? Like they did it on SmackDown too. First time ever on SmackDown Live that Randy Orton faces John Cena. I think they have faced each other on SmackDown before. I don't know if that's true or not. But they they, they like made it so big. First time on SmackDown Live, Orton versus Cena. Okay, like great. You don't have to label it as that. It's good enough as it is. Uh, he put, also puts, what am I least excited about is a tag match. And I'll get into that in my SmackDown review. Uh, sad because I love tag team wrestling. The only way I can get happy for that match is if Brazongo wins. 7 out of 10. Oh, and one more thing. At Elimination Chamber, a part-timer is dropping a, the title to a young talent. At, and at Fastlane, a part-timer is taking, a, <laughs> taking one away from a young talent. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. It's the complete fucking opposite. <laughs> And he puts, oh yeah, and <laughs> even though it has nothing to do with fucking SmackDown, I, to, I, I said I would do it. I'm not gonna well, I guess he, he was an old member of the Wyatt family. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, oh, there's some other tweets by Casey. I hate how Twitter mixes all this up. He puts, uh, can't wait for Elimination Chamber, 9 out of 10 for SmackDown. Question for you guys, will Roman Reigns turn heel? Or when will Roman Reigns turn heel? When will the old man McMahon realize nobody likes him? He's absolute garbage. (laughs) 
Uh, I don't know. It never. looks like you. I mean, going against Undertaker WrestleMania is going to make him heal. You're not going to go fucking face into that match. That's career suicide. Like yeah. they they've put him in a career suicide mode right now. <laughs> so I don't know. It, it's so unclear what WWE actually wants to do with Roman Reigns. <laughs> but then, because <laughs> no one actually knows if they are going with the face route or the heel route. But then you said after, or I think you said it last week on the show. But the long term goal would be to have him as the face of the company, even though if he turned heel now. <sighs> it's so bad. They don't know what they're doing. They have no idea what they're doing. If, if he faces Taker at WrestleMania, there's yeah. no way he could be a face in that match. Glorious Greg tweets: SmackDown was solid and just better than Raw, hands down. I guess SmackDown a solid 7 out of 10 this week, and I'm looking forward to Elimination Chamber. Look at everyone's looking forward to you. Oh, you didn't hear, you don't hear any of that for Fastlane. You, and you won't by the time it comes up. <laughs> and they get a month yeah. to, to yeah. promote and they And they're not going to do anything. We have the rumored and the announced matches so far, and it's all going to come to fruition. All the rumored matches are actually going to happen. I would rather get Fastlane out of the way and then have SmackDown build SmackDown is like a something. Yeah, yeah, fa- it's like a the pre. It's like when you had cassettes back in the day, and like you're a kid and you you just want to watch the movies. So you're sitting there and you you double tap fast forward so it just skips through all the previews. That's what Fastlane is. Elimination Chamber is that movie waiting at the end of the previews. <laughs> Literally, um, he also puts in the Fatal Four Way match that kicked off the show was great. I'm a glad Corbin won. Hashtag Corbin Revolution. Yeah, you bet you love that. Oh yeah, I love it. Hey, day one. Day one Corbin fan over uh, here. Last SmackDown tweet comes from a YouTube fan who actually looks like he has a Twitter or a Twitter account now. That's Prince Jones, a.k.a. King Scampoli. I'm pretty sure I'm getting that right. If I'm wrong, then I'm sorry, Prince Jones. But he tweets, SmackDown was, was terrible. The AJ Styles treatment is ridiculous at this point, even though I like Baron looking strong 4 out of 10. There you go, Tyler Jones. You get someone that agrees with you there. It's both. They're both named Jones. Yeah. What are the odds? Tyler Jones, is that you making two accounts? We got the Cranky Jones tag team over here. <laughs> the Cranky Jones. Um, if you guys win Twitter Fan of the Month, I'm making you guys a tag team, and I'm going to find like the hickest song ever. <laughs> I'll input my voice. The Cranky Jones. That sounds terrible. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, what were we talking about? Uh, I can't even remember now. That was the end they, of the tweets for SmackDown. Oh, he said some of Styles, but... No, he said uh, he hates the treatment of Styles. But it made sense this week. It's not like it was bad. Styles was distracted from Maurice pulling the Miz out, and that's how he lost. Yeah, it's not like he... Styles was about to win the match. Yeah, like it wasn't... It made sense for what they did. The way Cor- Corbin won and the way AJ Styles lost made sense. Just like every goddamn week on SmackDown. Everything just makes sense. <laughs> ah, all right. So before we get into the Raw review, I guess, guys, I forgot to mention this earlier in the show, we have a special 2K17 series coming to you guys soon. Not sure when we're going to start. We're going to try to get it started sometime. Uh, we'll see when. Uh, but it's the WWE 2K World Cup. Um, I think I said that right. WWE World Cup. Anyways, it's a tournament. It looks pretty cool, and we, I think it was a really cool idea. It's got its own Twitter account, so go follow it, at WWE World Cup 2K on Twitter. It's got the bracket set up there, the tournament rules. We're really excited for it, and I also made a championship for it. So I'm not going to get into the full details. So just go and check it out um, when you can. So, again, at WWE World Cup 2K, and stay tuned for that on our YouTube channel. So, yeah. Big things happening for Knowles Bar Wrestling Podcast. Mm-hmm. Big We're things. expanding, you know. We're doing unboxings. We're doing yeah. 2K. It's expanding awesome. from just the podcast, yeah. you know, trying to get more viewers, yeah, more people trying. interested. <laughs> we do, we reached over 400 subs now on YouTube. We're getting there. Uh, let's get into Raw. And another Raw, another Monday, or sorry, another Monday and another typical Monday Night Raw. The same crap we've been getting for like the last eight, or was it eight or six months now since the draft? Just it started okay, and then it just takes its usual plunge into the second hour straight downhill. Where literally, you could watch the beginning segment, fall asleep, wake up in the main event, and then you wouldn't have missed shit all on Raw. So we got an injury update for Seth Rollins tonight. I guess you can call it an injury update. That was sort of something. Um, I'm very confused. And as we're just talking about this, on the actual direction of Roman Reigns and what they're trying to do with him on Raw. Because it just looks like they're all confused backstage and they don't know what the hell to do with them and where they want them to be as a heel or a face. They knew Joe was going to get the reaction that he did on Raw. But they still chose to have him confront Joe and get booed out of the building. And still made him look strong. I don't understand. Oh, I, I really don't understand. 
I, I, I did like the debut of Samoa Joe, but yeah. there was one key. They could have done it better, actually. They could have done this way better, but the, again, it's typical WWE. Or no, WWE. I, no, I like how they did the contract signing to make it big. Yeah, but then the the ending of the show. Yeah. So there's one key plus I found throughout the whole thing of Raw. There's less authority figures. We saw Mick and, and Stephanie, or we saw Stephanie only once in the show. And that was the beginning, mm-hmm. and we barely saw Mick Foley after the opening segment. It's so good. That, that was good. That's something they need to continue doing. We don't need to see them all show. I don't need to hear Steph's cringe voice. Yeah. We got the predictable Goldberg acceptance, but a little twist at the end of it. Uh, and the show was just cluster. You know, it, it lacks direction as always. And the organization every single week is just, it looks like they put everything they have for Raw into a hat and just dump it out. And whatever comes up first is what they put on first. Like they have no idea what the hell they're fucking doing. And again, the second hour plunge continues to bore the hell out of me every week, man. I get so tired in this middle of Raw. Like, I don't want to watch the rest of it. But I know, like, I want to, I have to sit there and watch because the end of Raw is something you want to tune into. You'd, you'd hope. You'd hope. It's not like SmackDown where you want to tune in for the full two hours. It's just, it's it just doesn't long. make sense. It's too long for too much crap. Yeah. So we get in the opening segment, and we get Stephen, Stephen McMahon and Mick Foley in the ring. Mick looks, Mick looks normal for once. Didn't shave his beard, though. It looks like he's growing his beard back. I don't know what the hell's going on. He was clean shaven, and now all of a sudden he's not. And you can see, like, gray hair and shit mixing in there. Um, we introduced Samoa Joe right away. There was, like, no no wait, no not. He just get right to it. And we introduced Samoa Joe. Good reaction for Samoa Joe. Uh, I thought expecting maybe more booze than that, but no. They got a, a good non-casual crowd. Joe's in a suit. Yep. That's a, that's a first. I don't remember last time I seen Jamo, or Samoa Joe in a suit. I think it was uh, Main Event Mafia back in TNA. Oh, the last man. time I saw him in one. Uh, so it's different. Um, Foley and Stephen McMahon uh, bickering back and forth about how uh, Mick Foley talks to Samoa Joe. He and introduced act, him. Yeah, and I, how, acting yeah. like how he introduced him. Act, just acting like he doesn't give a shit and he doesn't like it. But, you know, it's something good for business again. Uh, Steph saying that uh, Mick didn't really sign Samoa Joe and bring him over because it was Steph doing it and Steph basically telling me fully that he had to do or she had to do her, his job for him and I get, they're, they're teasing this deception more and more I don't think McFoley is going to last very long I say McFoley's gone by the next draft the next draft they're going to have a brand new GM well, whoever it is he's leaving for his hip surgery yeah so they're going to have to have someone but they're going to have Stephanie in the in, in, in interim and I guarantee they're going to do a story where like the power just goes to her head for being commissioner and GM at the same time. And eventually Vince McMahon will step in. We'll see him back on TV once again, like the once a year thing. And then he'll introduce the new GM and whoever it may be. We'll see. Um, Quadruple H. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Joe finally grabs the mic and basically says he's putting the entire locker room on notice. Ooh. Saying that he'll beat up your heroes because he's the, the destroyer and the destroyer has arrived. Mm. See, from then after was complete bullshit with Samoa Joe. But from at that point, I'm like, okay, if they went this direction right here and made him the most unstoppable force on Raw, have they him could win everybody. the Universal Championship, have him carry it for like a year or something, and create an underdog story after that. Make him be that number one heel on Raw and be just the guy that just kills everybody and, that, and someone that's legit. Not it's, like Brock Lesnar that's only there once in a while. Yeah, Samoa Joe would be that guy. I, t- I loved it from Joe. After that, it was just complete nonsense. And we'll of get course. into that right now. Can't have an opening of the show yeah, without... Yeah, right on cue, fucking No Man Gains comes out. I'm like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. Now, at this point, I'm like, hey, they don't know what the fuck to do with him. Because I knew he was going to get booed here. <laughs> they still chose for him to come out here. And I, I, at this point, too, I'm just like, Joe, just run away, man. Just get as far away from this No Man Gains as possible. It, it's career suicide doing anything with Roman Reigns. <laughs> Um, so Roman Reigns coming in is claiming that it's his yard. I don't know if that's okay. like a jab at Undertaker or, or whatnot. But yeah, 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 Roman, your yard. Mm, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> so he has a stare down with Joe. Uh, Foley just starts screaming out of nowhere. I'm like, oh, my God, stop screaming. Why does he have to scream all the time? Why can't you talk normal, Mick Foley? It's like when something happens that's like out of his control, he just starts, <laughs> just starts screaming like crazy. So, like, Mick, calm the hell down, man. <laughs> he books S- Samoa Joe versus Reigns in the main event. Uh, oh, my God. 
I'm like, the only way I thought this was going to work is if Samoa Joe absolutely destroys Roman Reigns in the main event. That would be nice. And we get nothing from Reigns. just gets buried for once. But we'll get into that after. Um, but then I actually thought, oh, wait a minute. Roman Reigns getting buried? Uh-uh. Vince won't want that. Can't have that. Why didn't why didn't something happen here though? Like right after they booked this, they had the music playing and that was the end of the segment. Why didn't one of them jump each other here? Like Roman jump up into a Superman punch or Joe spear the shit out of Roman and start beating the shit out of him. Nope. Right here is where you, if you want to make Samoa Joe be a credible force and a credible destroyer, like he just claimed he was, he should have just kicked the shit out of Roman Reigns here. Make him look weak going into the main event. Then I would have had something that would have been something credible. Because Roman Reigns looked strong in the main event. He looked absolutely ridiculously strong. Made Joe look weak, not winning clean. Stupid. If, if Roman Reigns got beat up in the beginning segment, I would have been like, okay, that kind of makes sense. He, it, it makes sense for him to look strong going in at weak and then overcoming the, you know, from the attack in the beginning of the show. No, they just didn't do now. nothing. But no, you just you make him look like a fucking Superman. Like he can't get hurt. Just it looks so typical this opening segment. It was just bad. So we move on. Come back from commercial. For some reason, we get a useless video before this. It was Bailey versus Nia Jax. We get a useless video backstage of her and Cesaro and Sheamus doing some. Was it the same video that they showed last week? Was this a was this copy and pasted? Because why the hell did they show them together? I'm like, okay, is it going to be a mixed tag match again? No, it was just Bailey that came out. What the fuck does Cesaro and Sheamus have to do with this? Nothing. I have... Like, who cares? Stop this. Heaven forbid you make Bailey looking like she's walking to the ring looking focused. Not trying to put a, a freaking headband on Sheamus. No one cares about that. This is why the women's division is atrocious on Monday Night Raw. And she's facing Nia Jax. Not some random jobber. Make her look focused because she's facing Nia Jax. This girl who's just run over everybody in the division but no we gotta make her look yeah hey shamey's can you put your hat on move your move your mohawk yeah, out of the way like i know bailey's got to be the happy-go-lucky person but she's also got to be serious yeah anyway nia Jax, absolute beast man she's just been <laughs> i think she actually has potential in this division if they chose to make the division go a certain way because right now they have no idea what to do with it according to tyler jones she doesn't well that's his opinion He's- um <laughs> Man, I wouldn't be mad if she was the one to end Charlotte's streak at a pay-per-view. That'd be – that'd make sense. But no, again, nothing makes sense on Monday Night Raw. So the match went longer than I expected, which is a surprise here. I thought this was going to be a really quick Nia Jax squash match. Uh, but Charlotte came out, obviously, starts to distract Bailey, causes Nia Jax to pull off the victory with a Samoan drop. What kind of finisher is that? Samoan it's almost as drop. bad as Bailey's finisher. Roman Reigns uses that as the second move in the match. Why the hell – is that a finisher? What happened to her leg drop thing? I don't know. Like, really? A Samoan drop? Whatever. We'll move on. Next week, it was announced that Charlotte is going to face Bailey for the women's championship. Cool. She's probably going to retain, like, a dirty way. You know, she's not going to lose a title next week. Um, Strowin squash match is up next Oh, year. yeah. And why... I don't know. Someone tell me why this was this had a purpose for anything. Because <laughs> literally, Strowman has no direction either. This is why Raw has no direction. Because you put Strowman in a squash match again. He, he went, reverted, like he, he went, went from, from doing main that. event. He went from main event. Then he went to in a six man tag with Titus O'Neil and Rusev. Then he went back to the main event. Now he's back to jobbing four people. Like, like it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> So what the hell was with the – like, we didn't get anything about Roman Reigns till after this happened. These four guys got these, absolutely destroyed. The one jobbers, guy ran away. They look like a 10-year-old's creations on 2K17. The they one guy had like, a hang- Everybody he's throwing. Put Roman Reigns, same. He's put everyone out there. You're going to fight everyone? Yeah, okay. Uh, fully dead books Roman Reigns against Strowman out of nowhere. Just completely – like, again, no direction because where did this storyline come from? Why does automatically Roman Reigns have to face Braun Strowman at Fastlane? Because fat, because right now Roman Reigns has something to do with Samoa Joe, but all of a sudden he's got to face Braun Strowman at Fastlane. It's because they they have the Royal Rumble thing, but they didn't they didn't expand from that. I I I don't know. Clusterfuck as usual. I I can only get behind Reigns 
here if it was actually leading to a feud with him and with Strowman at WrestleMania, but it's not. It's definitely not going to happen unless I say there's a strong possibility of that happening if Taker doesn't show up at Fastlane and Strowman costs or uh, Smojo costs Roman Reigns the match at Fastlane. That's the only way I think that's going to happen. Um, just if not. Like, who else is going to interfere? Hmm, I wonder. They had a little stare down at uh, Royal Rumble. Uh, this is The Undertaker. Oh, I'm right. Undertaker Roman Reigns. What a match. Cannot wait for that. Match of the year. Oh, we should have been down in Florida for that. Anyways, we get the debut of Akira Tozawa. Huge, huge addition to 205 Live. He had a really good showing at the Cruiserweight Classic. He's just, he's really good. He's a great piece of talent, good signing. Uh, he was even in Dragon Gate. Back when Dragon mm. Gate used to do the little tours around here in Niagara Falls. I, I was talking to our, our, our boy Vanny Day, and he said that uh, he met him and, and our old co host, No Cell Phil, met Tazawa back in the day when he used to go to a lot of Dragon Gate events around here. So mm. it's uh, interesting. Uh, he went to face uh, Drew Gulak this week, it was actually a pretty good match. Um, three minutes and 25 seconds, so longer than usual, which is uh, awesome. I'd like to see that. Uh, yeah. He he was doing like these weird like screams. Yeah. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> I don't know if that's he's trying to get the crowd what, into that. It's what whatever. with that? But. What, besides that great piece of talent, his, his ring set or his, uh, his move set is just incredible. Uh, Tazawa ends up winning. Uh, Brian Kendrick came out and shakes Tazawa's hand. And I'm like... If this is a feud, holy crap, man, 205 Live is going to be so much more watchable than it already is no, compared to Monday Night Raw. Apparently, Brian Kendrick just comes out to shake everyone's hand now. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the hell is going on with that. Um, but we get uh, Jericho and Owens. Oh, my uh, God. Here, and backstage. Uh, okay, this is after. Uh, Jericho and Owens come out to the ring, and they're just such a perfect pairing, man. These guys have been the perfect pairing that I've ever seen in WWE. It's the best thing going on Raw, literally. And Jericho with the US title is probably the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, I can't get over that. Owen starts talking about uh, overcoming Braun Strowman last week. You know he didn't. <laughs> Make <laughs> Owens it, look it weak sense. again. Yep. Uh, Jericho says ring. that he will still be the US champion after tonight. And he is still the GOAT. And he's, uh, he says he wants to, he has a bone to pick with uh, another goat. And he said, you know what happens, you know, when when a guy steals my catchphrase as a goat, Jericho's nickname, you know what happens, Tom Brady, you just made the list. God, that got such a big <laughs> pop. That was unbelievable. That was great. Yeah, of course, it's Tom Brady's on the most hated team in the NFL. Of course, he's going to get that. And the, where, the, where the hell were they this week? Oregon, Oregon, or no Washington, Washington. I don't know. Well, there's somewhere Oregon where or Washington, you know, a bunch of Patriot haters. Anyway, so I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, Jericho says he has an idea for WrestleMania's main event, and that is Y2J versus Owens, title for title, best friend versus best friend. And I'm like, okay, that's that's actually probably a better main event than we're actually going to get, and it's probably going to be our. I guarantee you, if Goldberg wins that freaking title from Owens at Fastlane, that's the main event of WrestleMania right there. Fantastic. Goldberg and Lesnar. Great. Uh, <laughs> Owens actually agrees, but says that he, he can't do it. He can't fight his best friend. He doesn't know if he can. And out of nowhere, out comes Goldberg. I'm like, okay, this is different. I'm like, what the hell? Like, I thought Goldberg's going to have his own little segment later on in the show, and then that was going to be it. But Goldberg comes out. Uh, no, <laughs> but at this point, I was freaking out. I'm like, no. The rumors of him beating Owens for the title. No, I already knew it. I already saw it coming at this point. I think everyone did. Um, besides all that, I'm actually still happy to see Goldberg back in WWE. The little kid in me still enjoys him back. And he's getting his, his, his last run in because his last run was fucking garbage. Like that last match with Lesnar at WrestleMania 20 was more trash than his squash match at Survivor Series. Yeah, So uh, I'm, I'm glad he's trying to come back and do yeah. better than yeah. he did when he left. Uh, Goldberg gives the the two girls, he says, choices, two choices. Uh, he's either step aside or face him two on run right here. Okay, that's all right. Uh, but first, uh, he accepts Brock Lesnar's offer and uh, challenge at WrestleMania. Duh. We know that was coming. Um, <laughs> Owen says it sounds uh, like a perfect undercard match. 
that, that really got under the skin of Goldberg. Yeah, he's like, wow, yeah. that's so great. great man, what that a, sounds a like a great undercard, undercard match, match to, to, the, to my yeah, match. To my main event match against <laughs> Y2J. And I agree, we're going to have that match. Main event WrestleMania, title for title, best for best match. What a good idea, Chris Jericho. <laughs> and I got Goldberg pissed. You know, how about I challenge you, Owens, at Fastlane for Universal title? Oh, fuck. There you go. Uh, it's already written itself, yep. man. He's winning the Universal title. I, I pray to God something happens that he doesn't. I think the crowd. This is bad. Because depending on how the crowd reaction is to Kevin Owens at Fastlane, Goldberg's probably going to get booed. <laughs> he's going to get booed by being, like, he's going to get, like, some cheers by the, you know, the casuals that love Goldberg. But then you're going to get a bunch of IWC people are going to be so pissed off that he beat Kevin Owens and buries him. <laughs> And if it's in one minute and 20 seconds, I'm going to lose my shit. <laughs> I might get another great reaction or a review video like we did for the Royal Rumble. That'll, that'll end Kevin Owens' title run, which yeah. has been lackluster. Yeah. Uh, Y2J says, uh, you know what happens, Goldberg? When you when you make up your own matches, huh? You know what happens? And then Goldberg shuts him up by grabbing the list and the pen and writing himself down. And said, look at that, WWE Universe. Goldberg just made the list. <laughs> Goldberg wrote himself in the yeah, list. Gold- Why'd you just like, oh, he didn't know what the hell to say. Uh, Y2J, Jen, you know what? He got, he got really pissed off. You know what? And then Y2J books the match for Goldberg versus he's, Owens. He you know, you, face, know, you, you know can't what? do that. You're going to get a match at Fastlane yeah. versus Kevin Owens. Owens. <laughs> <laughs> Goldberg's like, what? Uh, Come on, man. Yeah, so then Goldberg's like, to Owens, you and your title – or next. He like his voice cracked. He was like next. Oh. And then Owens is all pissed off at Jericho for accepting the match. Yeah, and then backstage, uh Owens was so pissed at him saying that uh he wasn't having his back. Creature wasn't having his back and then walks away all pissed off. And I guess, you know, this is leading to that deception. You know, it's gonna be freaking Owens and Jericho for the freaking United States title, which I'm not gonna be mad about. I just wish that would have been for the universal title. That would have made more sense. It would have been sick. Or do something else with Kevin Owens and Jericho. Just, Did we mention anything about the next week, what they're going to do? No, uh, next week we get the... Uh, <laughs> the Festival of Friendship. Yeah, they, they, later on they, they made up. We're getting the Festival of Friendship. Neat. Um, <laughs> next up here we get Cesaro and Sheamus versus the club in a rematch for the tag team titles. Enzo and Cass are... I guess you can say ringside. I know there's no commentary, but you got the random chairs that appear every time because there's no commentary table at ringside, but the random chairs that appear there whenever someone's uh, a yeah, ringside. And it makes no sense because they they just went from yeah. facing Rusev and steroid Mahal. Yeah. To, to now they're automatically back in the title picture. I mean, finally, we have to see them in that picture, but how did they get there? Where did this come from? Yeah. Uh, Why do they automatically get a shot at the titles? Yeah, but seriously though, Cesaro and Sheamus are getting more credible to me every goddamn week as a legit tag team, not just one that's put together and we're gonna know they're gonna you know split up soon. They actually look like they can be a credible team this way, and the crowd gets behind. The crowd loves both of them, man. Sheamus is slowly starting to get cheered too now. They love doing the whole boo, boo yeah. and cheer thing in the ring, but like when they first make their entrance and they're coming out, they're getting yeah. cheered. Even when like it cuts off Cesaro's theme into Sheamus' theme, he's still getting cheered. Like it, 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 they could become credible here, and I wouldn't mind that. Um, the club with the tag team title gold, though, in WWE, that's, that's just a pretty sight. That's like the most beautiful sight I've ever seen, and they deserve it, man. They deserved it earlier, but thank God they have them now. And they're getting to run with them. It's about freaking time <laughs> instead of um, looking horrible like yeah. they were the whole year. But I did notice something. I don't know if anyone noticed, and I tweeted about it. Carl Anderson had hashtag BC on his tights. Um, besides the obvious of what that actually means, what the hell else would it mean? He had KA on the other side of his trunks, which is Carl Anderson. It's not LK for or LG for Luke Gallows. Or Good Brothers. It's not GB for Good Brothers. Bullet Club. How is he allowed to do that? Or maybe it's the Balor Club. Balor Club, eh, but they, they they never got associated together yet. They never were to, unless that's like a preview, and Anderson just kind of slyly foreshadowed something. I don't know. We'll see. Good match, though. Really, really good match. Uh, Gallows uh, runs into Enzo near the end of the match, and 
Enzo's all pissed off, so Gallus just freaking super kicks Enzo. <laughs> For Gallus to super kick like that, it, which makes him a good wrestler, man. A guy that size to super kick like that is actually pretty cool and actually unreal because not a lot of big guys can do that. Um, big Gas gets uh, upset about that and just big boost the shit out of Gallus here, which causes the DQ and the club retains. Um, and the Enzo and Cass looking all pissed off and Sheamus and Zara looking pissed off at them. So it kind of looks like there's going to be a possible four, uh, three-way threat. tag team match at Fastlane for the titles, which would be sick. Enzo and Cass, the club and Cesaro and Sheamus. That's probably the only match I'm going to be looking forward to at Fastlane. <laughs> yeah, literally. Um, or maybe a possible four-way if they do include the New Day because I don't know what the fuck they're doing with the New Day. Um, this is at this point in the night now we get the Seth Rollins injury update or lack of update. It literally was just the shown Twitter post of Seth Rollins not telling us anything about the injury. Just thanking fans about his his <laughs> overwhelming support. That was it. That was the only update we got on Seth Rollins all fucking night. What was better? That This was like a ploy for WWE to get everyone drawn into WA and ro- ro- This is like a ploy for viewers. Yeah, stay and watch this. We're going to give you an update. They didn't update us with shit. We have no idea when <laughs> Seth Rollins will come back. Absolutely no idea. What was what was worse? That? I had to dig into this, and apparently it is an eight week injury. It was his, it, the same knee that he injured back when uh, he was out for a while, and it's an eight week injury. So literally, the timetable is the two weeks before WrestleMania. So it's going to be tough to see what the hell to do with Rollins. So we'll see. Was that as good as Charlotte's winning strategy? <laughs> Nothing compares to that. <laughs> uh, New Day versus Shining Stars. Do I even have to fucking talk about this? This does need to get reviewed. It does, okay? I guess the Shining Stars are back from their timeshare, because where the fuck have, where the hell have they been? They're in the tag team division, this lack of division on Raw. Where the hell have they been? New Day came out and started saying, like, you have these timeshares, yeah. but no one's actually ever been yeah, there. This is what, I would point something out. Kofi said, you come out here every week giving these timeshares. What? They have not been coming out here every week, because where have they been every week? This is the first time I've seen the Shining Stars in 2017. And it's February. <laughs> and they're saying, uh, I thought, I kind of found it funny, though. They were making fun of them, saying, we've never seen this resort. Yeah, it, it doesn't was, exist. It was funny. And, and Xavier goes on talking about, uh, what, how, what they give the fans what they really want. They wanted cream. unicorns. They gave them unicorns. They wanted trumpets. They gave them, or they wanted uh, music. They gave them Francesca, Bootios. too. And they wanted food. And they got them uh, booty. Or they wanted cereal. They got them bootios. They make sure you ain't booty. booty. Uh, so we got the plug there. They, they, they yeah, the then plug. they started chanting an ice cream chant. Yeah, and, uh, and then going yeah, on to... Big, C, Big E says, the, uh, yeah, they they should give them ice cream. We get the ice cream chance, you know, a little plug to CM Punk. Uh, the end of the match we go, man, Apple... I, I, okay, I don't know where the hell the Shining Stars have been, but Epico and Primo look so out of shape here. Like, they got fat. I noticed it. Okay, because I remember the last time I seen Epico and Primo, the, the Shining Stars thing, they actually were in decent shape. Uh-uh, they got fat. We noticed, just like everyone knows, this Big Show's getting in shape. He still looks huge to me. Um, I know he's got abs now. Ooh, what the fuck can do? Uh, anyway, just, this match was just a waste. And I love how they said, big victory for the New Day. Yeah, big, okay, the New Day wins here, and Michael Cole is like, oh, a big win for the New Day. Big win! Against a team we haven't seen since fucking November. Oh, yeah, huge win. They're climbing up the ranks again for being the Shining Stars. And cool. New, New Day just has no direction. They're just yeah, like, what they are they doing? They don't know what the hell to do with these Why aren't they trying to go back for their tag titles? Why weren't they included into that? Why weren't Enzo and Cass and the New Day at oh ringside? Put the Shining Stars main event. They don't need to be on freaking Raw. That was useless. They are in shape. They don't give a shit. Yeah, but they're they're, they're so la- they have such a lack of they're tag men. teams on this Raw. Was, this was filler. This is just they filler. have a lack of tag teams. So there's no one else for New Day to feud with. That the yeah. other three are are feuding for the title. And we're gonna move on here to something that was in the filler hour, and it sucks because it shouldn't have been in the filler hour. We got Jericho versus Zane for the U.S. title. Zane, Zane, it's been driving me insane. This, this fucking raw is driving raw. me insane. Uh, <laughs> backstage. Uh, Okay, so this is the part where they made up and we get the announcement for next week, uh, the Friendship Festival, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Owen says they're basically saying that they're going to have each other's backs just like Owen's going to have – or Jericho's going to have Owen's back at Fastlane. Owen says you'll have Jericho's back tonight in the U.S. title. Um, why is it taking so long for Zayn to win an actual title? It's like, it's like Bray Wyatt all over yeah, again. Poor, poor Sami Zayn, man. Like, I remember back when like everyone wanted him to go to SmackDown. It never happened. I still want him to go to SmackDown. 
He deserves one soon, man. Even if it's the U.S. title, he needs a fucking title, man. He needs a title. Well, maybe he's going to get one now. Yeah. Um, there are some people booing Sami Zayn. I was listening really carefully. There are people booing Sami Zayn. Who are you? Who, what are you booing Sami Zayn for? You're probably like Roman Reigns. You're probably a Roman Reigns fan. That's probably it. It's a good match, though. Really, really good back and forth match. Um, there was one point where YTJ was distracting the ref while Owen super kicked the shit out of Sami Zayn's chin, and Y2J hits the cold breaker for the retain. Okay. Well, if it leads to another match with them at Fastlane, who knows? Yeah, who knows? Uh, I good, hope if Owens wrestlers. wins the U- if Owens wins the U.S. title, that he actually feuds with someone, maybe Sami Zayn again after WrestleMania. Because Zayn, or if Owens is going to get the U.S. title from Jericho, and Jericho is going to go back to Fozzie, he's going to need a credible feud because Owens is not going to go from the main event to being nothing on Raw. I know it's typical Raw, but a guy like Owens is not going to slip that far. So he's going to need a credible feud after. So and those we'll two can wrestle each other all day long. Yeah, and Zayn and Owens are fucking insane, man. They put up the greatest matches I've ever seen. So we had El Generico versus Chris Jericho. <laughs> Uh, all right, we'll move on. We got Sasha Banks back in the medical room. So this oh, is the only wow. time she appears on Raw is when she's in the medical room or, you know, off camera getting hit by Nia Jax while uh, two people laugh at ringside. Um, the Drew Gulak and Tony Neese laugh at ringside. Um, <laughs> what are they – like? What I can't they're actually going through with the, the selling of this injury. But Sasha Banks is pissed off. They, you look at her face she's pissed yeah. off about every time she has to do it. This is the only time we're gonna see we ever see Sasha Banks on TV, and it's horrible. I fucking hate it. Um, the medical doctors say that the medical doctor says like keep this heating pad on. <laughs> heating pad? What? They really? They went from a bandage last week to a heating pad? Like, what is this? No one wants to see this. It, oh god, it was just cringe. It's cringe. Dumpster fire. This is why we say dumpster fire all the time because of this shit right here. Then Charlotte comes in. Of course she comes in. Starts antagonizing Sasha. And Sasha's just looking at me and upset. Probably not because of that. Probably because actually she's not being used properly. And hopefully we see he'll turn soon from Sasha. I, I want to see I'll get into that later. I, well, I hope it happens. Um, so Austin Aries has an in ring interview with uh, many people. We into that. Um, I think this counts as a 205 segment because there's a match after. So this, this, this whole thing here lasted 15, but we got 15 minutes of cruiserweights extra here. So on top of the three minutes and 25 seconds, we almost got 20 minutes of cruiserweights. This is the first time ever we got like 20 minutes of cruiserweights on Raw. Yeah, JBL, where's my other 40 minutes? Yeah, we're still missing 40 minutes though. <laughs> Maybe it, uh, maybe you can replace your canceled Legends of yeah. JBL television. So Aries out there with banana in pocket, and he is uh, announced on 205 Live this Tuesday night. There will be a fatal five way. Wow, they did, they no, suddenly a, love a the fatal, fatal five way elimination man. match. Doesn't make sense because it's not yeah. a fatal five way. Yeah, <laughs> it's a fir- that would be first fall. Yeah, so fatal five way number one contender elimination match, whatever that means, uh, between Gal- Jack Gallagher, Cedric Alexander, Noam Duh. TJ Perkins and Tony Neat. Uh, yeah, we're calling him Tony Neat, Tony by the Neat. way. Uh, Aries calls out Neville. Uh, all right, Neville is out there, so he has an interview with Neville, and uh, he asks which one of these superstars scares you the most. But he like smirks after, as in to like say like this is not like a question Aries was told to tell him. This is actually Neville or Aries poking at Neville, and we'll get into the, why this is uh, why he's doing that later. Um, Neville's calls Aries delusional and says no one scares him in this division. Uh, he's the king of the division, whatever the hell he the says. The king of the cruiserweights. Yeah. <laughs> Out comes Cedric Alexander, Noam Dar, Jack Gallagher, and Tony Neat follow one by one. After each one, just, Aries is getting pissed off. Uh, even when uh, Tony Neat comes out, he goes, oh, here comes Tony Neat's abs. He can- I love how Aries was still talking to Mike while everyone was making their entrance. Yeah, here. it's great. He's such oh a great God. commentator. And fucking Noam Dar comes out. Yeah. I'm going to steal the title just like I stole Cedric Alexander's girlfriend, girlfriend Alicia, Alicia Fox. Fox. <laughs> <laughs> cringe. Uh, Absolute cringe. Everyone starts brawling each other too here. And fucking fantastic. Love it. Uh, Would have loved for Aries to do something though. Because we'll find, I'll, I'll, I'll mention why later. Uh, this this felt more like a showcase though, because when they were starting the brawl, everyone had like a certain spot here. It was more like a, a showcase so kind of, which yeah. is okay. 
it was a, a showcase thing to like get people to like, tune into two hundred five live and watch and, and you know just 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 get into it. Vince loves the direction. We'll get into that later of two hundred five live. And um, Jack Gallagher actually got a really good pop. <laughs> His spot was freaking hilarious. He, I think this was during the match. Yeah, it was during the match. Um, but when we cut the commercial break here, during the commercial break, we got a promo for Emelina, who's supposed to be debuting next week. As far I don't, you know what? I know I don't. I, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't talk about <laughs> Emelina. You can't even say that it's going to actually happen. We've actually already had that before. Back in December, she was supposed to appear because that was the promo. They use in December. I don't think she's actually going to be there next week. That's just my guess. If she is, whatever. I was wrong. Um, we got back from commercial break. We got a tag team between the the people brawling. We got Cedric Alexander, Gallagher, uh, Perkins against Neat, Dar, and Neville. Uh, pretty decent match. There's the one spot with <laughs> Jack Gallagher. What, I wonder, was it on Raw or was 205 Live where he did the umbrella spot? I don't remember. I think it was 205 Live. I don't remember, but there was a one spot where everyone's on the outside, and he climbs up to the turnbuckle, and he does like, the Mary Poppins jump. <laughs> the, the, so, uh, like, he with, failed uh, to do what Royal Rumble and Sir, Sir William III, he calls his umbrella. <laughs> God. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Neville ends up walking out of this match, and the heels are pissed off, which uh, leads to Cedric Alexander picking up on this, and with the lumbar check for the win. Such a sick finishing move. The lumbar check is... One of the greatest finishing moves in the cruiserweight division right now. So good. Um, besides uh, Neville's uh, Red Arrow, which we don't see anymore. Or Mustafa Ali. Um, and Mustafa Ali's inverted 450 splash. That's fucking insane. Um, 205 Live is going to be really, really sweet. And it's getting better and better every They're single day. They're adding more talent. Uh, so it's a growing division. I can't wait for the future of 205 Live. Move on. Main event. Roman Reigns, or No Man Gains, against uh, Samoa Joe. The Samoan we wanted at a Ro- Royal Rumble. The Samoan Joe. Yeah. Uh, Roman Reigns, not my Samoan. Uh, not one thing Joe. I want to say, the they made Reigns look so strong here, and I completely dis- disagree with it. This should have been Samoa Joe coming into this match, absolutely killing Roman Reigns, and then ending it like that. You know what they should have done? They, when they started this here, they had Roman Reigns come out to the ring, and Samoa Joe jumps in. Okay. That was a good. That was good. What they did there was amazing. I, I love that. Uh, save the Samojo entrance for another day. Uh, but have and he's attacking Roman Reigns here before the match even starts. So there's no bell and just th- throwing Roman Reigns all around the ring and all on the outside. This is where it should have ended. This is where Raw should end. They should have done it so bad, speared him through a barricade or put him through a table, and that's how Raw should have not ended. even have the match. Not even have the match. Make Roman Reigns look absolutely fucking weak for once, Vince. Just freaking. Close your eyes. You don't even have to watch it. Just have Smojo absolutely destroy and be the destroyer that he says he is and kill Roman Reigns here, and that's where you cut Raw off. That's why but you no. make him credible heel. No, we don't get that. We should have the match happen, and it, it's just terrible booking. You made Roman Reigns look strong through the entire match. There's, there's spots where I'm like, Joe never took that bump ever in NXT. Why all of a sudden is he looking weak as shit here now? Yeah, and it looks like Reigns was going to win the match. He almost won. Almost freaking won. But Joe ends up winning this match because Braun Strowman, you know, Mr. We get that fucking sound. And then Roman Reigns, and he comes out to distract Roman Reigns to set up their fast lane match. And that's how Joe wins. So Joe wins off of distraction. That's how he has to beat Roman Reigns. Can't beat him clean. Are you serious? On On his debut night on the main roster. The guy that's... Everyone wants to be the top guy on Raw and has the potential to be the top guy on Raw. You just ruined him. You just killed it. Never again will we see Samoa Joe stronger oh, He's going to get the Kevin Owens treatment now. Guaranteed. So into my Raw rating. I wrote down one here, and I'm actually just going to change it because I don't know what I was thinking when I rated that. I actually put it as a 5. No. Raw to me this week, it's a 3. <laughs> 3 out of 10. Because <laughs> the 3 points go to the Cruiserweights. Uh, Cesaro and Sheamus, that whole tie team spiel, and Jericho and Owens. That's it. Plain and simple. I don't need to talk about anything else. Roman Reigns makes the show go all the way down below five. It's going to get my corporate standard rating I've given it the last four weeks, two. Two? Two mm-hmm. out of ten. What, what, what else are you supposed to rate this show? It's bad. It's bad from start to finish. It's bad. For you people that said you liked this show, what aspect of the show? You tell us good? what you liked about the show. And don't give us the obvious ones. Tell us why you liked Roman Reigns looking strong. Tell me how show. this show flowed from start yeah. to finish because I don't. It doesn't. It's a it's a pick out of a hat nonsense show. 
Awful. Awful. So move on to the A brand then. The A show. And that is SmackDown live from Seattle, Washington, Dana Bryan's hometown. Um, one thing I want to point out here, we opened with uh, Tom Phillips talking. And there's also a part after the opening segment where it was just Tom Phillips talking, no one else. Why is – isn't Ronaldo the lead commentator here? Maybe they want Tom Phillips to start taking the reins a bit. Well, then get Otunga the hell out of there because you why, don't need four. Why do they have a four-man – commentary team for smackdown for a two-hour show you know you're trying to be different than raw you don't have to be that different that's just Make ridiculous it, go down to two then fuck you don't need God. four people I don't, know. It's just, it, I don't know if it's just me but it, i think we're just bad to like just get otunga off of commentary yeah. so we get the go home show for elimination chamber uh looks very very intriguing pay-per-view uh the world title picture will become more clear after this pay-per-view we got intense feuds going into the elimination chamber as well that actually makes sense I'm talking about you, Monday Night Raw. Something that actually makes sense on one show should make sense on the other, but it doesn't. Uh, I expect a pay-per-view that will blow the Rumble out of the water, sadly. It's it's going to kill Raw. Or it's going to kill the Rumble. Guarantee it'll be way better than the Rumble. People will guarantee, I guarantee people will be putting that on Twitter 100% by the end of the night. Uh, I just feel good watching SmackDown. I just feel so good. Like, I, I don't get disappointed. I don't get my hopes up. It just flows. I just love watching SmackDown from start to finish. I know there's too many commercial breaks, and it's a two-hour show, but it makes sense, and I love – I just love SmackDown. love watching it. it makes me feel good. <laughs> Brings joy to me. Not uh, Mondays. No, because Mondays suck. Monday it, Mondays are the worst when you wake up in the morning, and you know you have to go to work, or you have to go to school. And then even after that, wait till 8 o'clock. Yeah. Great. Just it's just terrible. Uh, Dale Bryan opens the show to a huge, fittingly amount of yes chants. Oh, I it's think it was in Seattle. Washington. Yep. Uh, he's he, still still over as fuck, even as a retired wrestler. He gets triple or even more than that times the pop that Roman Reigns wishes. Yeah, Darby he got. is wishing right now. They they're sitting there cringing at the fact that his reaction he still gets as a retired wrestler, and it's not the Samoan that they want to be cheered like that. Well, sad Darby. I mean, if you didn't shove them down our throats, you'd get that reaction. But you don't. Uh, he talks about how good it is to be home. Talks about being uh, thankful or graceful again. The whole thing we did when he retired. And uh, the last time he was here, he did retire. And the crowd oh, was going to boom here. Uh, Miz interrupts to a huge array of boos. This guy is such a good heel. Perfect heel. Perfect way to chime in. The Miz is definitely a cre- almost a credible top heel on SmackDown. It's insane. Um, the amount of amount of like what Miz has done from the start of being drafted to SmackDown to now yeah. has been the best work he's ever done in his career. Um, so Miz is antagonizing Daniel Bryan, making fun of him for not being able to wrestle anymore. Um, which you know it's just typical. I don't know if these guys are gonna have a match or not. It almost looks like they're going to. Uh, you know, like a two second match yeah. Miz is trying to talk shit but the crowd is just drowning him out with Daniel Bryan chance is absolutely drowning him out with Daniel Bryan chance so unreal such a good sight even with the yes chance they were so loud um, Daniel Bryan even encouraged the, the crowd to be louder than that and then the yes chance just interrupted Miz again and literally just like Miz was getting there all flustered because of how loud the chants were it, it, it's crazy um, Baron Corbin then comes out to the ring and my God, does Corbin ever look good lately? He's been doing so well, and I'm so happy with the direction they're, they're actually putting in place for him. He's going to be a number one heel on SmackDown eventually. By far, he's going to be, and he's going to win the championship. And it's just going to be, re- it's going to be awesome. And, and I'm glad because he's one of my boys. So like, you know, I'm going to be double happy. Um, <laughs> definitely well groomed. SmackDown well groomed this guy, hundred percent. Imagine if he was on Raw. Fucking be jobbing the people probably. Um, Corbin starts talking to Miz and not Daniel Bryan here. I thought he was going to say something about Daniel Bryan, like about him, you know, not getting a one-one title match shot. But he starts talking at Daniel Bryan, or, or Corbin starts talking at Miz, saying that he talks too much and would like to kick his ass right now before the chamber match even happens. Ambrose interrupts and says that the Miz looks like a shoe. <laughs> he looks like a shoe. He looks like a shoe. I don't know. He's still wearing his blind nun outfit, but whatever. Uh, Styles then comes out to a huge pop. I mean, wow. 
they <laughs> I don't think they can keep him heel any longer. The amount of reaction this guy gets every week is insane, man. Um I see a future face turn, hundred percent. I see it happening. They, they, they're He's gonna, gonna run gonna out get of options, like man. that. Yeah. Styles says that everyone is living in their own fantasy world about uh, the Elimination Chamber and all this nonsense. Uh, Dana Bryan then books the uh, Elimination Chamber preview match and books a fatal four way to start the show between Corbin, Styles, Miz, and Dean Ambrose. Like right there, done. SmackDown wins. SmackDown beats Raw from that opening segment right there. Then we get into the fatal four way match. Short. But it was a sweet match, and it all fit and made sense. Again, more flow and more organization. Um, it's definitely a uh, it's definitely a, a point where they're trying to save all the big spots and big moments for Elimination Chamber between these guys. Uh, Styles uh, trying to set up the pin on Miz, but Maurice pulls Miz out of the ring, distracts AJ Styles, turns around into the end of days, and Baron Corbin pins AJ Styles. Makes him look credible. Huge, huge win here. I can't say that enough. It's such a big win for Corbin, and it'll go down in the long run to help him ascend to that world title position. It makes him look strong going into the yeah, chamber. It's great. There's such a good move here. I love that SmackDown pulls off these things. And PI, yeah, you could say, well, it looks bad on Styles, but Styles well, was about to win the match. Yeah, if it wasn't for this Maurice. was smart booking. This was 100% smart booking. So good. And again, this is why this it's already beat Raw. This right here, I could give. I this can't believe they gave it this to us. Yeah. before the match. But again, I loved how it was short, but it was it was good at the same time. There's some good, uh, many good spots there, um, and no goons. Again, like you just say, goons out there. It wasn't burying Styles. Styles was not getting buried. He he lost of a distraction. End of story. Uh, we get a backstage promo by Luke Harper, cryptically cryptically talking about. Uh, how the whole basically just talking about the whole Wyatt turn, Wyatt turn like Bray and Randy Orton turning on him. Uh, Harper says that he knows how to fix it, and he sees the snake in the grass being Randy Orton. Basically says he's coming for Randy at the chamber, and this is really, really, really well done. The uh, the background lighting was just sick for this. Um, really, really intense promo by Harper. I think he's a good he's a good wrestler in general. We all know that. And he actually can solidify himself as a main event challenger in the future, I think. Um, Maybe. If he can continue promos like that, build his mic work like that, I think he uh, could be a credible contender for the championship. I'm not going to lie. I wouldn't mind that. He's got to change his shirt. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we get, a, we get the, the interview between Nikki and Natty. And the weird moment before it happens, uh, Tom Phillips is talking and they have the, the camera zoomed out on the announce table. And when they're about to go into the interview with Natty and Nikki, a zoom in so close on Tom Phillips' face that it almost looks accidental. Like, they're really close. They're, like, this freaking close. I don't know if that was uh, an accidental <laughs> camera cut or what. I got to see um, that. Yeah, I'll have to show that to you. Uh, very, very intense back and forth uh, argument between Nikki and Natty. Like, typical what they've always been doing the last couple of weeks. I love the direction of this feud. Um, it's definitely the best work by both these women I've ever seen. Um, love the breaking of the fourth wall every goddamn week. Uh, Nikki criticizing Natty about running off the glory of her family, and Natty criticizing Nikki about the whole John Cena story, and that's the only reason why she's there. Um, Natty saying that if uh, if she wasn't married, John would be the one to go for her and not Nikki. <laughs> What a savage comment! This and she was, posted man. a Twitter picture of yeah. uh, John Cena holding Natty, <laughs> oh or no, my God. Tyson Kidd holding Nikki. Oh my god! And then Natty responded later with like, "Oh yeah," and then it's a picture of John holding Natty. <sighs> so much heat in this feud. I love it, man. I love it. Just oh, it, I, I they have three, three women's matches at this Elimination Chamber review, and each one of them I'm looking forward to. So Can sad. Can you imagine Raw. if Raw had three women feuds? That, I can't because it'll never happen. They don't know how to do stuff like SmackDown can. I, just, ugh, I can't wait for this match, man. I never thought I'd be interested in an Natalia versus Nikki Bella match. But they just made it look really good. Awesome. What a good way to go into the chamber of this The last way. month and a half build-up has been Love fantastic. It. Yeah. Uh, we got Apollo Crews versus Dolph Ziggler. And one thing I can critique about this is that Apollo Crews got his entrance jobbed. Uh, I don't know why, because this is the heel usually get his entrance job. Why is Apollo Crews here getting his entrance job? I don't know. Anyway, 
the three-way feud between Cruz, Kalisto, and Ziggler is actually more intriguing than I actually think it is, or it actually looks. Uh, I actually think it's a really, really good idea between the three. Um, look, it's just it's it's creating that. It's, the storyline is based off Ziggler suddenly turning heel, and no one knows the reason why. And it looks like Cruz and Kalisto don't even want to step up to Ziggler. So you know what? I like the way that the direction of this story is going. Um, I don't think everyone gives this, this feud enough credit, and I think it deserves more credit than it actually shows. Uh, the three men are great wrestlers. Like, you're putting all three of them in the same match. How do you not see this being good? Uh, plus, Cruz is finally getting utilized and not being buried on, you know, the dark matches every night. So we actually get to see more of Apollo Cruz and more showcase of Apollo Cruz. Um, it was a really quick match this week but it made sense the way it ended Ziggler got really really cocky and tried to pump up the band and do the HBK super kick or sweet chin music but then uh, Paul Cruz grabs his boot and then causes a roll up for the win and that's how Ziggler loses gets pissed off leaves the ring grabs a chair again I mean they're continuing this thing with the chair and uh and it starts attacking Apollo Crews with the obvious save by Kalisto. And it's the funniest part right here is because every single time after one hit of the chair on either Apollo Crews or Kalisto, the whole crowd is chanting, one more time, one more time. So Ziggler is getting cheered for hitting the faces with chairs here. <laughs> oh, man, I was dying. I was laughing at this. I think it's very, very tough to turn Ziggler because of how established he is as a face. But whatever. Um the Seattle crowd, they're a bunch of they're a bunch of goons. They're going to cheer, obviously, for chair shots. Uh, backstage, Daniel Bryan confronts Ziggler about it. Ziggler says that he can uh, beat both of them at the same time, anytime he wanted to. So they're like, oh, okay, you want to you say something like that? An elimination, or elimination Chamber, you're going to face both of them in a two-on-one handicap match. So Elimination Chamber, it'll be Ziggler versus Apollo Crews and Kalisto in a handicap match. That's, that's intriguing. You, how, you don't know how that match is going to go. It could be a pre-show match, whatever, but it actually looks like in- it's intriguing. I like, just don't know why you have the heel being put in handicap. Yeah, match. that's the one thing that's like, what? what? It's different, but, it, it, you know, it, it, again, it makes it intriguing. Like, you're like, okay, I actually want to know how this match goes down, so I'm going to watch it. It's probably going to be them two just beating the shit out of Because if they announce that for, like, a Raw match, no one will fucking watch it. Everyone's going to be like, all right, it's at 8 o'clock, I'm just going to, or at 9 o'clock, I'm just going to change the channel 9 o'clock. I don't even care. I'm going to tune back when it's done. But I don't want to tune out with this match. I actually want to see what happens. Uh, we'll move on. Get the dual contract signing for another first. First time ever. Uh, I don't know why WWE has this effectuation with the first time ever shit. Um, <laughs> Renee mentions it twice in the same sentence. Okay. Uh, both matches look unreal for the card. Becky and uh, Mickey James looks very, very intense. And Alexa Bliss and Naomi looks promising because everyone sees the work that Naomi's done since coming back from injury, and she looks really, really good. So I think they can put on a really good match, both those girls. Um, Alexa is just such an elite heel already mm. and literally has taken her half a year to do that. And that's fucking incredible. If It only takes her half a, he- half a year to become that elite heel. Who knows where this girl's going to go? One of the greatest of all times, probably. Mm, wow. We'll see. Um <laughs> I just, I, she's a good heel. I, I should it. never want to go see her go face because the whole face thing she had in NXT with the fucking glitter and bliss. It was fucking garbage. I, I'm like, this girl's probably gonna become a jobber later and later on. I just don't care for her. When she turned heel, there you go. Some some people just made for being a heel, and that's her. Uh, Mickey Reigns. James, so good on the <laughs> so good on the mic though. Uh, oh. Doesn't look like she skipped the beat either, man. Mm, Mickey, I don't know. man, I don't want to say. I don't think it's. I know this show is explicit, but I don't want to go into detail it, yeah. here. Um, but Mickey Jane's still good on the mic. Uh, she's going to be huge for SmackDown Live in that two-year full-time contract she has. So good for her. Naomi's been impressive every single week since coming back from injury, like I just said. Um, so finally, she's being used properly rather than what she used to be used like on Raw the whole team bad thing it was just garbage no one cared and becky yeah becky lynch uh mickey james saying uh the division was built because of her and saying that she would waited seven years and built up so much anger to unleash and she would unleash it all on becky lynch and prove that she is the one that created becky she's talking i forget what she even said um uh, what the hell did mickey james say oh my god 
I'm botching, botching mania here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, talks about, okay, yeah, she talked about Mickey James leaving the company. Okay, I got it. I got it. We're back on track. Uh, I'm like raw here. Um, she talked about Mickey, how Mickey James left the company and says that she will slap Mickey James back into the past and saying that she, uh, Mickey James may have built up seven years of, uh, anger, but Becky Lynch has built up an entire lifetime of straight Big fire. fire. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Typical Becky promo. Uh, so uh, Alexa gets it on the mic here. Yeah. Like, hilarious. Uh, she says that she, she, everyone should show respect to Mickey James for being the one to beat Hall of Famer Trish Stratus at WrestleMania 22 for the championship. So she kind of jabbed at your girl Trish there. It's her girl too. Yeah. So, uh, and says, and just, Basically, you know, just say respect Mickey James, and now Becky's going to lose to Mickey James. So she so doesn't talk about anything about Naomi, but signs a contract and looks up and goes, "Oh wait, I forgot about you, Naomi. I didn't even know you were there." Because <laughs> she keeps talking uh, about how she's irrelevant. Yeah. It's so great. Naomi brings up uh, about her two wins against Alexa Bliss. Uh, bringing up at WrestleMania is in her hometown, and she's going to do whatever it takes to walk into WrestleMania as champion. It's okay. It's a good. It's a good promo. You know, it's what you want to do. You want to go into your hometown of WrestleMania with the championship. Uh, kicks Alexa in the back of the head right after she says that. I saw the gift contract. for that. Woo! Uh, Naomi, huge, huge spot jumping on Alexa and Mickey uh, over the top rope, too. Um, just, wow. Both feuds look intense. This was so well done. Probably the best contract signing I've ever seen. It was by the women's division, sadly. Um, well, not sadly. You know what? I give them credit. Uh, I just hope they don't copy Raw's main event. The, 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 the rumored Raw main event of being a fatal four-way, I really hope they do not copy that. And it's a fatal four-way between these four for the championship at WrestleMania. Because they don't need to copy that. They need to do their own thing. But if they do, you know what? Ugh, whatever. I'll go along with it, sadly. Uh, we'll move on here on SmackDown to 12-man tag team match. Oh, my God. Uh, basically, everyone in the division was out here. Maybe the only critique I have for it, though, is it doesn't look like SmackDown knows what they're doing with their division, and they're struggling to rekindle it after American Alpha winning the titles and the whole Rhino and, and uh, Heath Slayer thing is done. Um, so American Alpha needs, needs to look the more dominant, in my opinion. Uh, Brazongo have the tools to be good, but don't get used either. Uso slipped hard after losing those titles and becoming heels, I don't know what the hell they're doing anymore. They, they could be a credible number one heel tag team, but I don't know if, again, SmackDown doesn't know what to do with them. Uh, I believe that the Revival will be on SmackDown eventually when they do get called up, and they will actually will win the gold, and you're going to be that dominant team that we've been waiting for a team out of NXT. Where we've been waiting for a dominant team out of NXT to come up and be dominant, and no one's done that so far, and I think that's going to be the Revival. I don't, so. I don't know because they seem to be doing some of the authors of pain right now maybe after wrestlemania yeah but i mean eventually Re revival will be yeah. up there and we're gonna have to yeah because i actually really like this heel usos man i yeah. really think the heel usos have a lot of potential and yeah, i really they, like they, this they have the tools to be the number one heel tag team on smackdown but they just don't get used right because they don't know what to do with them like, and, they keep putting them in these 12-man tag matches that no one wants to see every goddamn week and man. everyone knows i love brazongo too yeah. they have potential they have the tools used. as well Everyone hates how they misuse these guys. Anyway, the match was all right. Huge upset, in my opinion, when uh, American Alpha won this. Or not American Alpha. Uh, the Ascension won this match. <laughs> okay. That's a, Where did that come the from? the last time the Ascension won a match? On TV. On TV. This was incredible. Well, I was marking out because I love the Ascension. <laughs> um, but yeah, they could be. They also have the tools to be a top. If they continue what they did on NXT to now... They would have been a top heel team, or even restart it now. Be that dominant team. No, Rob ruined them. No, they were there. So the potentials are all there. They just need to be booked right, in my opinion. So we get into the main event: John Cena versus Randy Orton. Uh, so hopefully, it's the last time we see this in 2017. This is why I pointed out, and, and everyone freaking out over this. I'm like, you know, don't want to see this at WrestleMania. Don't. Uh, I keep seeing people on Twitter saying they wouldn't mind a Cena versus Orton match at WrestleMania due to the history angle they can build. Okay. Uh, uh, eh. Please no, though. We're not in 2008. Okay. We don't need to see John Cena and Randy Orton at WrestleMania. Bray deserves this way more than Randy Orton or than John Cena. John Cena can do his little tag team, Nikki Bella, Miz shit. I don't care. They can put that in a pre-show where I don't need to give a fuck. Um, 
I just love how they're labeling this is the first time ever on SmackDown Live. This is the best part. Just, they faced each other. They have to have faced each other on SmackDown before. I can't think of the day or when, but I, they had to have. <laughs> I don't remember. think so. In some tag match, yeah. at least. Uh, anyways, Bray's at ringside watching this. It was a really, really good back and forth match by the two. And it's typical. They're going to put on a good match when Cena and Orton are in the same ring with each other, as we've seen in the past, aka 2008. Um, referee gets clocked. By Randy Orton's boot while John Cena is trying to pull off the AA. Bray then jumps in the ring to interfere and starts beating the crap out of Cena. Cena gets Sister Abigail basically out of the ring. Luke Harper charges the ring here. I'm like, okay, something's going to happen here. He com- comes out to confront Bray and just stares eye to eye with Bray Wyatt. And the whole crowd is like, this is awesome. There's such a good moment. And who would have think that these two would end off a, uh, a SmackDown in the main event? And to get a reaction like they did was impressive, and I loved it. So but, much intensity. But yeah, that's a match we don't want to see for WrestleMania. It's okay yeah. for SmackDown. Yeah. So Harper clotheslines the shit out of Bray Wyatt. Harper pushes Orton into Cena for the AA. And while, while this is happening, the referee shockingly and conveniently wakes up right after the AA. He just suddenly jumps in the ring. That's it. He's already awake. One, two, three. Cena wins. Laugh out loud. Whatever. Oh, well. It makes sense. He's the champ now. I wouldn't, I'd be complaining if he wasn't the champ, but he's a champ. Makes him look strong as a champion going to Elimination Chamber. Um, so, you know what? It makes sense. Cena winning, whatever. SmackDown score, I gave it a 9 out of 10 this week. And I gave it only a 9 because the one point that missed out on a perfect 10 goes to the tag, tag team, team cluster, cluster fuck, fuck with I rhino getting was. cheered for some reason yeah they didn't the crowd didn't care about this so much that they only cheered for rhino the entire match <laughs> and he finally got in yeah and he finally got in the crowd just blew up it was like dan o'brien walked back and he out. lost yeah and he lost <laughs> he gets like busaki knee kick from the top rope by the ascension man it's nuts <laughs> i gave i gave smackdown 9 out of 10 see i didn't watch smackdown i was yeah. watching i was in buffalo watching the sabers game so I really can't give it an actual rating. So I'm just going to give it a thumbs up, I guess, because I, I can't give it you a rating. You can go my rating and You've heard me review it here. 9 and 10 is pretty fair rate rating. Mm, I guess. But I only saw a couple of things. I can't okay. say that I saw everything. So yeah. I'll give it a thumbs up. Mm, that's thumbs about up. it. All right. So we're going to do some Elimination Chamber uh, preview, I guess, or predictions before we get into anything else here. I'll just quickly go through them. Uh, we'll start off Becky Lynch, Mickey James. Uh, I'm saying Becky Lynch comes out on top here. I think because Mickey James is there to put over the new talent, like they said she was there for. So I'm going with uh, Becky Lynch in this match. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Becky too. Yeah. This is, is what Mickey James wanted to come back for to put over, you know, new talent. B- to establish Becky is still one of the top women in the division. So I think it's going to be a really good match. We're going to see a lot of Mickey James, but I, I see Becky coming out on top. Uh, moving on, Natty versus Nikki. Really, really intense feud. I'm looking forward to. Can't wait to see this. Um, I say Natty in this really? case. I say Natty's going to pick up the victory here, and it's not going to be clean. No, 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 sorry. I'm going with Nikki Bella because she's the woman version of John Cena. So, yeah. well, we'll see what with her and the whole uh, rumor mill going around now. We'll see. Uh, Ziggler against Kalisto and Cruz. I'm saying Kalisto and Cruz come out with the victory here. <laughs> I, that might be the pre-show match. Yeah, that might be. I it. think Ziggler's just going to get the shit kicked out of him. Probably. I'm picking Cruz and Kalisto. Me too. Sure. SmackDown Tag Team Championship is a t- tag team turmoil with every single person in the division. Whether or not it will be in the chamber, it's not really announced yet. So far, it's not going to be, but if it is, whatever. Um, I'd say American Alpha retains here. I can't see anyone else winning right now. If it's the Ascension, I'd be happy, but I'm going with American Alpha. <laughs> they gave us that tease of the Ascension yeah. winning a match finally. Who knows, man? Uh, I'm going to go with the Usos. Oh, out of the out of the park pick. I really want like the Usos to win, man. I think yeah. they got a lot of potential. Yeah, in the a lot of people team. on Twitter want Brazongo to win. I love Brazongo too, but yeah. they're doing this whole fashion police bull crap. Yeah. And I don't know. I could see American Alpha retaining too. Smack the women's... Championship Alexa Bliss versus Naomi. <laughs> Obviously, we're gonna go with <laughs> Alexa Bliss. Yeah, I'm gonna pick her too. But if Naomi won here, no, 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 no. She could go into WrestleMania in her hometown with a championship, but then she'll probably lose it right back to Alexa. They could do that. No Those. way in hell Naomi gets three okay. wins over her. That'd be incredible. I but. think that 
Becky beats Mickey, and then Alexa beats Naomi. So like the, yeah. the feud is like a stalemate. Okay, I like that. And the WWE Championship Elimination Chamber match. Oh, so man. so so tough to predict. So I, th- tough. I think this will be. A, a There's so many routes that can go here. They can actually put the, t- t- the. Maybe they have a different m- idea in mind. Maybe Styles wins the title. Maybe Cena keeps it. Does Bray Wyatt win to go into WrestleMania feud with Orton? Uh, obviously, Ambrose is not winning it. Or does the out of the bark pick Baron Corbin end up winning his first championship here? The, so um, many different outcomes here. Yeah. Um, you, you could make an argument for anybody, but yeah. I mean they they are setting up this whole Randy yeah. Randy Wyatt and Bray and I'm Wyatt gonna go thing. With Bray Wyatt too. I think he's going to win his first world championship. Thank God we're going to see that'll him win be his world championship. huge for him yeah. to finally get a singles title. Like yeah. my God, and then Orton hopefully put him time. over at WrestleMania and have Bray Wyatt be that next credible guy that WWE didn't yeah. do for years with him. Yeah. But I could. I don't think Cena's coming out with the title. No. There's no way. No. I think that's why they're doing it. That way Cena doesn't lose it clean. He loses it in a match with six guys. By next WrestleMania, he wins it back to become the first 17-time champion. Great. Yep. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I think Bray Wyatt's time is now. (laughs) Oh, God. All right, let's get this new segment in. And we don't have a theme song for it yet. That's still in the works. It's still in uh, beta. Um (laughs) So the list of 10 is new segment is going to replace the Luke Gallows polls. So guys, if you guys missed it in the beginning of the show and you're just tuning in now for some reason, or if you skipped ahead to here, basically me and corporate cabbie here have five moments from the week and we are going to give it a two kinds of rings. It's either going to be a perfect 10 or it's going to be a make the list uh, rating. And we have sound clips for them. So get ready for this. You're going you're gonna to love this segment. It's going to be your favorite segment of the show. So the list of 10 makes its debut. And we'll start off with Corporate Cappy. All right. My first, <laughs> I don't know if you call it winners, goes to Braun Strowman going oh. back to going back to squashing four jobbers. Woohoo! I don't know why they have him doing this again, but my God, well, all I have to say about Braun Strowman going back to squashing four guys is is you know uh you just made the list. <laughs> That's Braun what I have Strowman, to say to that. You've made the list. There you go. Congrats. Uh, my first moment of the week is a Luke Harper's backstage promo, which was actually really, really well done this week. I love the visual effects out of it. I love the mic skills done by Luke Harper. Uh, I think he's very, very good on his own on the mic. And I think he'd be a future, again, like I said, a top star in the main event of the SmackDown division. If he continues this, um, you know what? I see it happening. And for that, Luke Harper gets a perfect 10. <laughs> I love these sound clips. I love them. So get into your next moment. Next, Chris Jericho putting Tom Brady on the list. Okay. Oh. That it's in the list of 10, which is funny. Yep. And Goldberg writing himself on the list, taking the <laughs> list and writing himself on it. All I have to say to that is. Ten. That was phenomenal. Yeah, that was I mean, great. That, that would probably get the biggest pop all of Raw when Jericho yeah. put Tom Brady in the list. Pretty much. So there you go. My next moment of the week is actually a, I guess not really a moment, but it's something I've noticed. Uh, Sami Zayn's lack of WrestleMania direction. What the hell are they going to do with this guy? Why don't they? Um, they could have him face Triple H if Seth Rollins yeah, isn't ready. Yeah, why not? Uh, I see him though being in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, likely or most likely. Poor Zayn, though, such a wasted piece of talent. He's such a main event level superstar. I mean, they could even go as far as Balor versus Zayn. That'd be a sick match because of his lack of WrestleMania direction. He. You know what? You just made the list. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> staying with this theme. Roman Reigns. Oh no, man! I see. Reigns. I see him being a every week guy making the list God. because making Samoa Joe looks so weak in his raw main roster debut after all that Samoa Joe built up in NXT to finally get here. All I have to say to that is, you know what? You just made the list. Roman oh, Reigns, you suck. Yeah. No man games. Get the fuck off TV. My next moment is the Natty and Nikki continuing intensif- intensify of their feud. C- continuing intensity as for the multiple weeks here and breaking the fourth ball has just been incredible to me. I loved every bit of it. Um, both have this is be- both their best work in a long time out of both of them. And who would have thought it would have been a feud between N- N- Natalia and Nikki Bella, like you said in the review. So for that, 
This feud gets a... Ten. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Getting into my... I want to end it off on a high note. So I'm going to end it, or I'm going to go into this one with New Day fall to irrelevancy facing the Shining Stars and chanting for their own ice cream. Why? Uh, <laughs> and the supposed big win by New yeah, Day. Huge win. You know what that gets stars. you? You know what? You just made the list. <laughs> it gets that, you on the list. And that, that was four moments, isn't it? That was only your fourth. Yeah, I want to end off oh, on a high okay, note. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right, my fourth moment. Tag team turmoil on SmackDown. More like tag team clusterfuck. <laughs> Seems like there is no direction, absolutely none, with the writers and the division of the tag teams on SmackDown. It's almost like it's at a standstill. they've got talent there. Yeah, and the division just needs, you know what, in my opinion, I think the revival needs to come in and revive, pun intended, the division. And for that... You know what? You just made the list! <laughs> God. <laughs> Getting in to my last moment of the week. The tease of finally the broken Sasha Banks thing backstage with Charlotte. I liked it. Because yeah. hopefully it leads into the imminent heel turn of the boss and going back yeah. to where she belongs as a top heel. What she did on NXT was unbelievable. She needs to go back to that. And to that, all I have to say is... Ten. There you go. <laughs> did you say broken, Sasha Broken. Banks? She is broken. Look at, broken look, at, look at her leg. Broken Sasha Banks. <laughs> and they're it. making it seem like she's, you yeah. know, like on... Or Charlotte said something along the lines of, I didn't know I would ruin your career. Oh, yeah, sure. So now she's going to come back up from the dead, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and I want to give an honorable mention to the revival attacking authors of Pan on NXT. I thought that was really yeah. well done, too. Uh, my last moment is Baron Corbin's huge win over AJ Styles. And in a really, really good fatal four-way match, Corbin has been impressive lately, uh, just solidifying himself as that credible top heel on SmackDown. And what a way to do it with a victory over AJ Styles, the GOAT, and getting a huge win for his career. And for that, he gets a... 10. Yes, he gets that 10. The Corbin Revolution, huh? Corbin Revolution. So, guys, that was their, our new segment. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed that, and we'll have it a continuing thing with the sound clips every week here on the Lowdown Show. Maybe you guys can send us in some uh, yeah. some moments, yeah, and then we'll, we'll, we'll judge on yeah. if it makes the list or if it's a 10. Yeah. So, guys, getting to the last part of the show, and that is our WWE headlines. Hit that headline music. That's right. Welcome to WWE Headlines, the part of the show where we talk about any important news in the WWE. And we got some. We got some today. Got some important ones and ones uh, I like to rant and talk about because I like to nitpick shit. And here we go. Let's get into it. Undertaker versus Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. Didn't There's, you talk about this last week too? Ah, uh, but this, <laughs> this is an update. This is an update. Great. Then in it. Then in it. Yep. Uh, huge rumor on to whom? Made this decision. Oh, no. It was not Vince McMahon. It was not Michael Kevin Hayes. Dunn. And it was not Bugs Bunny back there. It was not him. Okay? <laughs> it was The Undertaker. Okay? What? He was the one to make this decision. I could not believe when I read this. Rumor has it that this could be Undertaker's last WrestleMania. Oh, great. And he's facing Roman Reigns. No, yep, no. Exactly how everyone wants to go out. Because he apparently told Vince that once he gets his hip replacement surgery, he will never, ever wrestle again. Oh, I really hope this is not his last one. Taker said he wants to put over young talent at WrestleMania if it's his last one rather than an established veteran, a.k.a. John Cena. Apparently, Undertaker said that he could be the one to finally put over and get Roman Reigns over. No, uh, no. Do you know you just said, Undertaker? <laughs> That's not going to happen. I think he's getting old and senile, man. <laughs> Come on. No. Let the Taker, what are you doing, man? You're killing us, man. You're breaking my balls. God. Uh, and speaking of Vince, getting to the next part of the news, he had his uh, Q4 2016 press conference lately with some keynotes here. I took some keynotes out of this. So three keynotes. One, huge update for 205 Live. It includes more revenue through merchandise and even 205 Live getting their own live events. Hmm. Interesting. A 205 Live live event? 
That okay. would be something else. So I don't know how that's going to work, though. Are they going to share a live event with a SmackDown or a Raw? Or they get the, their, their own? And it wasn't really clear on what Vince actually meant by Probably that. Probably a lot cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> it would. You can come to the convention center here. Yep. Yeah. Uh, next bit of keynote from this uh, Q4 press conference. A brand split. It's about the brand split. He loves the current direction and how the brand split has been going since the brand split. So oh, yeah. Vince loves it. Because Raw's been fantastic. He's even loved SmackDown of getting more views some weeks than Monday Night Raw. Okay. All right. It's weird for Vince to like that. He talked about the possibility of brand jumping and refer to a superstar, a.k.a. Roman Reigns, as an example of him jumping to SmackDown. Everyone pumped the brakes. This is not him teasing Roman Reigns going to SmackDown. Everyone calm the hell down. Okay. It's just using it as an example because Roman Reigns is his boy and he gets a boner for Roman Reigns every time he's mentioned. So the only reason why you said it. Last bit of one or a bit of a note from that press conference was about the UK tournament. He's loved the success of it and loved how much the UK fans were into it and how much love the UK fans have for WWE continuing throughout the years. And he's still in talks with a possible WWE UK based show. So that would be in, that would be great for, for now. Them. Tyler Bate will be on NXT with the UK Championship. And it makes sense. Willem Reels over there. Kind of makes sense. Uh, the rest, the Elimination Chamber betting odds are out. Okay. Interesting betting odds. So American Alpha are favored to win the tag titles. Bliss is uh, favored to retain. Bray Wyatt is favored by, by two. Do you know who's in second place? Cena. Yeah. Uh, Baron Corman has the least amount of odds. Or not Bear Corbin, Ambrose. It goes Ambrose, Corbin, Miz, Style, Cena, Wyatt. Okay. Uh, Dolph Ziggler is favorite, though, over Kalisto and Cruz. <laughs> wow. Nikki Bella is favorite over Natalia. Randy Orton is favorite over Luke Harper. Forgot that match was happening. Luke Harper versus Randy Orton. I'd say Randy Orton wins. I'm saying Randy Orton yeah. wins. He just won the Royal Rumble. You can't make yeah. him look weak. Yeah. And Becky Lynch is favorite over Mickey James. Mm hmm. Standard. Another bit of news, and it's about my girl Paige. Her movie. She's getting a movie made about her. It's not a documentary. It's a movie about her wrestling family, the Bevises. And it is going to be produced and productive by The Rock and in the company Seven Cents Productions. I think The Rock owns that or something like that. Uh, but yeah, it's about the Bevis wrestling family life story. And Paige will not be in it herself. She actually has an actor playing her who I went and looked up. Actually kind of looks like Paige. So I think they can actually do a good job with that. But that's going to be interesting. Uh, there's a lot of history with the whole uh, Bevis family and their, their wrestling background. So that's going to be an interesting movie. I think it's going to be... A what comes out movie. first? The movie or Paige's uh, return? I don't know. I hope Paige. <laughs> uh, last bit of news. Austin Aries injury updates. This is huge. This is what we talked about earlier in the show. He is medically cleared to come back. He is done recovering from that eye injury, so the glasses are just a fake. And there's talks of Neville versus Aries for the Cruiserweight Championship at WrestleMania. So would you make Aries a face for that match? Yeah. Because he's a great heel commentator. But I think he'd be a face because of the crowd reaction he gets. I think that's why they're they're looking that towards So he's that. more of like a, an anti-face that gets cheered? Yeah, basically. I like that. I love Austin yeah. Aries. I think he's a yeah. great talent. He's gonna be, and he's a great wrestler. He is so good. Former Man. and former TNA World yeah. Champion. So a lot of former TNA World Champions on WWE right now. You got Joe, Rude, Eric Young, uh, Austin Aries. Uh, I think you're selling Aries short by putting him in a cruiserweight division. But yeah. whatever. We'll, we'll see, see how it goes with that. If that, if they're gonna have a WrestleMania match, fuck, I'm gonna be so into that. That's gonna be the crowd is gonna be into that hardcore. Um, and if the rumors are true about Rey Mysterio maybe coming back to the cruiserweight oh, division, man. that would help. Five is gonna. I'm just gonna watch SmackDown two or five every week. I'm not gonna give a shit about. Rob. Say we want to Rey Mysterio, but that guy sells merch like yeah. no. Literally, else. if everything comes to fruition up till after WrestleMania and Brock Lesnar is the Universal Champion, Roman Reigns is next in line to face Brock Lesnar. Kevin Owens is maybe the U.S. Champion or maybe not. I'm just not gonna watch Raw anymore. I'm done. I'll be done watching Raw after WrestleMania. This review, the Lowdown Show, will be the Lowdown Show SmackDown edition. Like that's all it's going to be. There's not going to be any brand wars. We'll give you the Raw one. There'll just be a yeah. dumpster fire gif for the yeah, whole I'll rest just, of the show. He'll give you the Raw review. It'll be a four second video of a dumpster fire. <laughs> Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to wrap it up for week number 44 of the Lowdown Show Brand Wars on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, where your Canadian based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw. And Tuesday Smackdown from the past week. 
Also during the show, we have our new segment, The List of Ten. We hope you enjoyed it, and it'll be a continuing segment here on The Lowdown Show. We also have our WWE headlines, where we talk about any important news in the WWE. Remember, every week the Lowdown Show is broadcasted right here, live on Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP or on the Spreaker app available for all Android and Apple devices. So go download it. Check it out, guys. It's a really fun app to use and for all podcasting. Um, if you'd like to join in our conversations and have your thoughts and questions and discussed on the podcast, tweet us at NoHoldsBarWP and follow us on NoHoldsBarWP. Love those tweets. <laughs> Love those tweets. Or by going to YouTube, subscribing to us here on YouTube as well, and dropping a comment in the videos down below. Stay tuned. We also got a lot of stuff going up to the channel, guys. A lot of 2K stuff, a lot of unboxing, so stay tuned for that. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, as always. And every week, I continue right here to be joined by my co-host, the blissful boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Cap. Check out the new vids coming up. Yep. As always, we are always here reminding you to keep it on the lowdown. Here's a what you gonna do? Bring it on. What you gonna do about it? Bring it on. Is that what you got? Bring it on. So what you gonna do about it? Bring it on. Gonna kick your sorry ass, but what you gonna do?